Hey everybody, this is Josh, just popping in here at the beginning of the episode to let you know that we now have a Patreon. That's right, patreon.com slash yet. There you'll find a bunch of cool tiers that you can subscribe and help support the show with. Uh, some of the benefits include a shout out in every episode for your social media, small business, online store, whatever. Uh, we also have um, opportunities to join our Discord fan server and chat with the cast. Uh, We also have um, access to uh, full unedited um, sessions, so you can hear everything that we do over the course of the three to four hours that we record. Um, It's a lot of fun, so be sure to check that out. That's patreon.com slash are we dead yet? All right, let's get to the show. Sinister Secrets and Dark Truths mystical creatures and magical powers, dark dungeons and enlightened paths, all lead us to ask that one question as time marches onward. Are we dead yet? Um, so yeah, so David, give just a real quick, quick uh, intro of your character here, uh, name, background, and what class he is and stuff. So my character is uh, Arturus Gimblebrook, or RT, the gnome, forest gnome, uh, eldritch knight. Uh, he's an active member of the, uh, it's the mages guild, right? Yes. Or does it have a different name? I can't remember. Nope, that's it. Cool. Uh, yeah, he is just an acting active member of the Mages Guild. Uh, he specifically puts his talents to use hunting down mages who would otherwise use their abilities to bring harm uh, to other people. He just simply does not tolerate it. Uh, other than that, he's a pretty fun loving guy. He loves a good story, a good drink, a good fight, or some good friends. Sounds good. Uh, so, you, so um, David, your character's name is Arturus? Uh, yeah, Artie. Okay. He goes by Artie. Artie. Okay, cool. Okay, so Artie, uh, where we start with you is we actually start three days before the events uh, that have taken place so far. Uh, you are standing in a briefing room inside the Tower of Mage Guild HQ in District 3. Um, you're there with three other members of, quote-unquote, your squad. Uh, you're there with uh, Vigo, Bones, uh, Caskbone. That's his full name. He goes by Bones. Uh, he's a warlock. Uh, you got Meluin. She's a cleric. And uh, Silrus Undermoon, the bard. So Bones, Meluin, and Silrus. Uh, and you're actually being briefed by the head of the Mage Guild uh, herself, uh, Justira. Um, which is a pretty rare occurrence. Um, she mostly handles the high-level administration stuff, so this is kind of a a weird moment for for you guys. Um, but uh, she's in this room and she's just explaining to you. Um, uh, look, there's a uh, a warehouse in uh, here in District Three that has some really strange magical energy coming from it for the past few months. Uh, we've tried investigating it through more legitimate channels, you know, through the council and, uh, you know, doing raids during the day and we keep coming up dry. Uh, so your team tonight, uh, is going to, uh, be sent in to investigate what's going on. Um, I want you guys to follow your instincts, uh, find whoever's responsible for the magic, the the magical, uh, energy that, that we're, we're reading and, uh, report back uh don't uh don't try and be heroes just you know by the book um stealth and secrecy is of utmost importance here but you know do what you have to do to to 
stay safe, of course. Uh, any questions? Right then. At, um, what are the chances I could get you to, uh, to lift the ban a little bit? Let me, let me stretch my swinging arm here tonight. Uh, I mean, if you want to hit stuff with your weapons, I mean, you know, just wait till they, whoever or whatever's in there, wait till they kind of make the first move, you know? Oh, I've taken the phone out of everything, I see. All right, then, just uh, point me and the boys in the right direction. Uh, yeah, she uh, she hands you a, a map of, of District 3. There's a big red circle uh, circling a building about uh, five or six blocks away. Um, from the, the tower's perimeter. Right then. Uh, any last notes before we head out? Uh, no, just uh, be careful. Um, like I said, it's it's weird. It's weird magic. It's not stuff we normally, you know, it's not like someone, you know, heating up water, you know, through their pipes or something like that. It's like conjuration magic or something. So it's, it's a little... Uh, it's a little uh, intense, you know, to be having that going on in the middle of the city. But I hate to break it to you, lots, but if you really think about it, all magic is pretty freaking weird. I mean, yeah. Right, but let's let's, uh, let's head out and go break some things. Uh, sure. Um, so you arrive. Uh, we'll flash forward to uh, the outside of this warehouse um, that you found yourself in. You guys are kind of clinging to the shadows in a nearby building. Um you Quick see, note, Josh. Can yeah. you repeat the names of the uh, the group members I'm with? I was yeah, trying to got, get the notes down. Sorry. I, uh, you got, I got Bones, mm-hmm. Meluin, M-E-L, uh, Y-U-W-I-N. W-I-N. Okay. And Silris, S-Y-L-R-I-S. And then they were a bard, cleric, and... Warlock. What? Warlock. Bones was the warlock? Yes. Warlock. Mel Ewan Cleric. Silver Spard. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so you're clinging to the shadows um, outside this warehouse. There's a uh, a window kind of on the near the ground floor of uh, of this warehouse um, bones uh, points to you and points to the window um, as if to say go check it out how high off the ground is it uh, it's about uh, three feet oh how convenient it just happens to be my size so you send me out uh, okay I will uh stealthily what crawl my way over to this window uh yeah sure um go ahead and make a stealth check just to see mm. that's not good um plus three that's a six <laughs> nice um yeah you uh you uh basically just like you're you're doing the kind of cheesy uh <laughs> sneaky stuff where you're like over exaggerating you know like uh kind of like crunk in uh emperor's new group yeah singing your own personal theme music yeah. danger rolling but in freaking armor exactly <laughs> um and uh there's actually uh, a couple um robed figures around the corner of the building from where the window is who uh come to investigate and they turn around and uh, they just say, uh, uh, "Hey, you, you ain't supposed to be here. Uh, you need to you, you need to shove off now. Uh, we're uh, we're doing business here." All right. Uh, sorry, I was just out for an evening stroll. Then um, I'm sorry. By by whose authority can't I be here? Well, I mean, this is our our property. You know, you can't just come onto someone's property and just start you know dancing around and and acting like a a, a weirdo. Oh, lads, you gotta learn to lighten up. Have a good time, you know. Come on, have, have a nice little dance with me. Uh, I'm gonna start dancing on the spot. Uh, yeah, uh, roll a performance check then. 15. Uh, yeah, okay, uh, they start um, dancing with you then. 
uh, totally. <laughs> uh, they're like, uh, uh, okay, uh, sure. Uh, this, I mean, you know, we don't really get a lot of entertainment out here, so uh, sure, yeah, we'll we'll dance with you, guy. Uh, but you gotta you gotta take off after after this, and uh, you just um, <laughs> you hear from the shadows of where you crept from, just like, God damn it, and. Uh, Suddenly, uh, <laughs> those two uh, guards there uh, fall asleep and hit the ground. And uh, you turn to look, and uh, Meluin is standing just outside the shadows with her hand out. Uh, it looks like she just cast a spell on them to put them to sleep. She's like, ah, you really don't take anything seriously, do you? I told you last, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Um, Besides, I always know you've got my back. Yeah. Oh, I should I should also explain. Uh, so Silris is a halfling. Uh, Meluin is a high elf. Okay. And Vigo, or uh, sorry, it, Bones is a human. So that's their sizes. Um, uh, so the rest of your squad like walks out and walks up over to the uh, to the uh, window and peers in. Uh, do you go with them? Uh, absolutely. Cool. Uh, yeah, so you uh, you all are looking into this window into this window here. Um, it's kind of cracked open a little bit to let some air in. Mm-hmm. And um, when you look in, uh, what you see are um, there is a large machine inside this room. Uh, with a tube that comes out of one side and is like feeding into like a box of something and it looks like something is getting like sucked up into this tube from the box um you can't see what it is from this distance but um but that's what you see there the other end um is attached to a uh conveyor belt and about every minute or so as you're watching this um after something gets sucked up into the machine, um, down the conveyor belt comes a, a statue of a tall uh, figure in mage's robes and a long, thin staff. Um, and uh, the uh, conveyor belt basically um, pushes the statue all the way to the end where it drops down into a tube that looks like it just goes down into the earth. What uh, what kind of material does the statue make look like it's made out of? Um, just like some really kind of cheap stone. Okay. Like easily breakable, easily flakeable, flakeable, breakable stone. <laughs> okay. Um, and there's about uh, ten robed figures kind of milling about in this place, like checking other boxes, um, kind of looking at other stuff. They're not really paying attention too much to the machine or what it's doing, but um, but yeah. Uh, there's definitely a lot of like magical uh, like just, just based on your knowledge of uh, being in the Mages Guild, you can tell that this mm-hmm. machine is powered by uh, magic in general. Interesting. Okay. And Bones looks at you and Silris and says, uh, Artie, I want you and Silverus to get in there and check out that box. Uh, see what's see what's going on. And he holds out a uh, a small stone, and he points to one that's connected to his ear, uh, his right ear. And he says, okay. "You know, just put this on your ear. We can communicate just fine. Uh, let me know what's in there, and we'll go from there. If there's any trouble, we'll stay back here and give you cover." Oh, fancy doc. Sounds like a good plan to me. Let's go, Lass. Um, what is... Do I see an optimal way in? Um, you could climb through the window. Okay. Uh, or um, you know that they're... Like, you could check around the corner to see if the door that those guards were likely guarding uh, have That's more a, people. Or I would like to do that, actually. Oh, yeah? Just bust yes. in the front door? No, I would like to check the front door. Oh, sure. Is there, yeah, can I like investigate for any guards in front of or anybody inside? There might be a more optimal path, less people, something like that. Um, 
Yeah, so you're looking in this window. You don't see anyone on the inside of this door, but you definitely see where the door would connect to kind of where those those two robed figures were. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, if you're peeking around the corner to go look at the door, uh, go ahead and roll an investigation check. That's don't fail me now. <laughs> Plus three, thirteen. Thirteen? Uh, yeah, you peek around. You don't see anybody there. Uh, you do see um, what looks like a, a small lock on the door uh, just underneath the handle. Um, can't tell from this distance whether it's locked or not, though. Anyway, so I guess the window it is. Okay. I mean, you do have those two guards also on the ground that... Oh. We're passed out. Uh, let's just do the window. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, Meluin and, and Bones lift you two into the window. And uh, yeah, you're you're now on the inside of this room. Uh, go ahead and roll some stealth. Can do. 10 plus 3 is also 13. Okay. And he rolled an 18, so... Um, you guys are good so far. Heck yeah. You weren't noticed. Awesome. Uh, well, if we are in the clear, I'm going to start making my way towards that, uh, um, box. Obviously I'm looking for my best opening. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, you kind of creep around the box. Um, you know, luckily you're, you're kind of clinging to the shadows on the side of the wall. So you're not really noticed, um, or paid any attention. Um, uh, Silris is kind of watching your back, uh, as you creep towards it. Um, and, uh, you realize the box is about five feet high. So, uh, you might need to get a boost or look around for something to stand on. Um, I think I can, Oh, I didn't take it. Never mind. Yeah. I guess I'm going to look for a boost. Is there something to stand on? Oh uh, yeah. Make a quick perception check as you look around. Ooh, 18 plus 1, 19. Yeah, um, you see, like, someone, like, left, like, a like a small crate next to, uh, next to this box. Uh, How convenient. Yeah. Uh, you flip it, you flip it over, you <laughs> stand on top of it, and you peer in. Uh, what you see are these small, <clears throat> like, about your size, uh, maybe even a little smaller, um, spider-like creatures with lipless mouths containing lots of sharp little needle teeth and small tentacles coming off the top of their head and they all appear to be sleeping uh, in this box Um, none of the noise seems to be bothering them or waking them up and and, that's kind of a nightmare yeah and you and as you're looking you see one of them just get sucked up into this tube um, (laughs) and go into the machine that's not strange or anything um (laughs) Cool. So, uh, I guess I do. I already have that stone in my ear, or I'm gonna put it. Uh, in he my handed ear? it to you, so yeah, you can. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna relay. Do I recognize this creature at all? Um, go ahead and make an Arcana check. Ooh, I'm good at that one. Oh, not that good. Eleven. Um, yeah, you you kind of you kind of have an idea that it might be something called a Gru, but you don't really okay. have any. Uh, firm knowledge on it. Right, bones. This machine uh, seems to be sucking up uh, creatures. Gru, just, I think they're called. Just, just sucking up creatures and turning them into statues. Well, I don't got much of a better explanation than that. Mm. Well, that's definitely weird, but not necessarily illegal. Um, you uh, you mind uh, getting some uh, hazard pay tonight? <laughs> Out of bounds. It's like you don't even know me at all. I mean, look, you know, I gotta ask. You know, rules are rules. You know. You just uh, tell me what you want me to do. I, I I want you to get in the box and get put in one of those statues. I, oh, that's I, that's not happening at all. No. I, I mean, don't want to crawl in there. I'll send Silrus with you. Uh, is maybe if she goes first. Um, 
Uh, yeah, Silverus uh, also Those has one of these. Those things are kind of gross. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'll I'll come check it out. How, how about that? I'll, we'll we'll come in and we'll come check it out. Real some stealth for these guys as they kind of try and sneak Fuck in. Fuck everything and... up. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay. So nope, actually they rolled pretty good. Twenty-one and seventeen. Yeah. So cool. Um. Yeah, uh, they sneak up. You wait a few minutes, and all of a sudden, you've got your whole squad next to you, just um, hanging out, <laughs> just just next to this box, um, while these idiot cultists just mill around. And uh, Meluin says, uh, "Oh, they're sleeping. They they kind of look cute in a grotesque kind of way." And uh, Bones says, uh, "Uh, yeah. Um, okay, maybe us uh, small ones will uh." We'll crawl in there, um, Meluin. I don't. I don't think you'll fit in one of those statues. You're. You're a little tall. So why don't. Why don't you head back to HQ and uh, gather up some, some folks to kind of shut this place down. Uh, rest of us, let's. Let's get in there. And he uh, just jumps in. To the box. Well, I definitely don't get paid enough for this. I'm gonna uh, jump in with him. Okay. Uh, Silrus follows after you. Um, and, um, you guys get, uh, sucked up into the machine. Um, and, uh, as you're kind of getting pushed through this tube, you start feeling kind of this magic take hold around you and this stone, uh, form basically seals around you, uh, leaving you enough room to kind of move your arms a little bit, stand up or sit down. Um, but you're you're starting to be sealed into this uh, statue um, around you, um, and suddenly you feel um, this statue come to rest on a uh, conveyor belt and start pushing you forward. And with that, you hear from outside, "Hey, uh, who are you? You're not supposed to be here." And you start hearing the sounds of uh, combat as. Uh, Meluin starts oh, no. casting spells and blowing shit up. Um, but yeah, you're uh, you, you hear over that little talky device in your ear. Uh, Bones just says, uh, "All right, sit tight. Meluin's got this. Um, we could be here a while, so uh, just uh, you know, stay frosty." Um, and you feel. Um, this conveyor belt push your statue down this tube and you suddenly feel yourself levitating until you softly land on the f- on the ground and you feel your your statue get moved around a little bit for probably about 45 minutes or so and then uh, yeah um, you are inside this uh, this room um, and Bones is just kind of making you guys chill until he gives the signal and with that we flash back to present day um you're sitting in this statue and you hear um some doors in this room that you're in slam open uh you hear a cackling voice uh say oh i'm so glad you've come uh and you hear lightning uh strike something inside the room and everyone else let's roll initiative could we do like a quick recap, actually? Because <laughs> I think, didn't we like r- weirdly awkwardly kind of cut off or something? We literally stopped at the roll initiative. Yeah, yeah. it worked out perfectly. Got um, it, but, got it. Yeah, but as a recap, you, uh, the rest of the party, uh, you guys um, started investigating the castle. You found a... Uh, prison down below where you ran into Shadow, uh, one of the Clothia's agents. Um, Chester, you tricked him out of his uh, nice daggers and his thieves' tools. Um, I did not trick him out of anything. I don't know why you're trying to slander my good name right now. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And he left. You guys also found a zombie beholder and a bunch of slods in a bunch of cages down there as well. 
Mm -hmm. um, one thing I forgot to mention about that is when you saw those creatures, they didn't react to your presence at all. They almost seemed sedated. Ooh, creepy. So that's why that was a little less uh, intense yeah. than it probably would be if you ran into those monsters in the wild. Uh, you guys then went upstairs to the right. You found a room with a book made of human skin that turned out to be someone's journal. <laughs> that was a creepy one. Uh, you fought some mimics after Chester's greed got the better of him. Vora, I believe you fireballed an entire room full of cultists. I did, and it like, caught on fire, and we just <laughs> locked him in it. Yeah. Oh, oh that's right. We <laughs> lit the room on fire and then <laughs> held the door. <laughs> just held the door. That is some classic, are we dead yet? <laughs> might, I, might I say. I was very proud of you guys. Thank you. And then you entered this, uh, this room, uh, which is the last map on the uh, maps channel here in Discord. Eberus, you were able to cast Call Lightning in this room because it's a very large room. And you were striking or you had struck the... Uh, yeah, you'd, you'd struck the uh, the seer with uh, with some of your your lightning, I believe. Um, I think I hit him and maybe a dude who was standing next to him? Yeah, I think you might have. Um, so they're a little damaged, but not much. Um Okay, um, so yeah, so as you entered this room, uh, the seer was excited to see you, thinking that you guys were coming here to pledge your allegiance to him, and Eberus kind of just opened up with a volley of lightning, uh, like a rude boy. I don't know why he keeps thinking that we're going to pledge allegiance, even though we keep actively I shooting mean, him. It's because he's a yeah. cocky man. All villains are cocky. Because he's a villain. If he captured us, he'd probably lock us in some low or some long slow moving death trap and then leave us to our fate <laughs> with with one inept guard yeah exactly one with inept a, guard classic and, a, villain. and an obvious uh way to release our death trap yeah well yeah there's a lever labeled release just in case <laughs> release just in case. on the inside of the room <laughs> yeah villain osha is no joke those guys are so strict yeah <laughs> Look, there's paperwork, okay? There's paperwork for everything. <laughs> well, uh, you guys are lucky then, because um, they didn't do too well with their initiative rolls. Um, so, uh, Vora, you're up first. Yay. Uh, you got the Seer and the Hulk. Yay. They're kind of right next to each other. Um, the Hulk is basically... Back so, uh, into the left, or back into the right. I'm going to start off with a good old-fashioned fireball. Can I get dexterity saving throws? And then for this, I'll use Dice Maiden because it's 8d6, and I don't have that many d6 in front of me. <laughs> no worries. Okay. Uh, so the Hulk rolled a 8. That's a fail? Uh, yeah, that's a fail. And the seer got an 18. Okay, the seer takes half damage. So that is 33 total damage. Um, Damn, son. It's half. Uh, 16. And the seer takes 16. And then I'm going to expend two sorcery points. To cast Firebolt as a bonus action. Nice. Which one are you targeting? Uh, the Seer, obviously. <laughs> Cause screw that guy. Enough damage. Girl, <laughs> 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 Josh is like, guess what? Didn't even put a dent into him. I mean, sixteen yeah. really isn't that much. Yeah, I think I did twenty to him. Cause he, I think he passed my Dex check with the lightning bolt. Mm. I, I don't see the numbers in the roll here. Do you want to just roll damage right now for that then, Chris? Well, I I don't remember if he passed, but I um, channeled divinity it for max damage. Oh, okay. Um, Vora, what did you roll for to hit the uh, seer with 
Does a 12 hit the seer? It does not. Oh, that's okay. I still did a bunch of damage, so I'm okay. Yeah. But that is the end of my turn. Okay. Um, next in the order is uh, it. You're up. What? What? Also, um, the Hulk was standing next to the seer initially, right? Uh, back and to the right, yeah. So a five foot square over and a five foot square back. Okay. Uh, who don't? Yeah, I don't think I could hit him with a five foot explosion. Who do I want to get? What is there? So there's the Hulk. There's the Seer. There's all the bad guys, right? Yeah. So um, so on the map, in the in the map section. Oh, am I lame? Is it on the map? It's not really on the map, but basically you've got the throne. Yeah. The Hulk is standing next to the throne. The Seer mm-hmm. is standing right in front of the throne. Okay. Well. All right. Well, let's just do the seer because at least if the seer maybe dies first, we'll nip that one in the booty. Sure. Ooh, does a twenty hit? Yes, it does. Good job. Fuck yeah, bitches. Okay. Uh- <laughs> cool. And then I'm gonna do one four four. Nine damage. And then... This... So I can do... Question. I can do a second attack, but if I want to cast Hunter's Mark, would that be my second attack? Or is that just a bonus action so it's like on top of the second attack? It's a bonus Um, action. Yeah, so your second attack is part of... Because you can take two attack when you do the attack action, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's just a separate... Yeah, so that means that when you attack, you attack twice. Hunter's Mark would be a bonus action that you can do regardless. Okay, I'm gonna do my bonus afterwards. Or if I can do it before and use it. I'm gonna say you already started your attack action, so... That's very true. Alrighty. Oh, okay. Oh, Oh, this is scary. Um. Oh, um. Can I use sharpshooter f- sharpshooter feet for? Because I got twenty five. I'm gonna use the sharpshooter feet to make it twenty. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> You're still attacking the uh, the seer. Yep. Okie dokie. Blast him. Fuck yeah! I'm gonna blast that bitch. Blow his friggin' head off. So, and that's 16 damage for that. So, 9 plus 16. Damn. You don't like that. Good, bitch. <laughs> so, <Sorry. laughs> um. that's it. That's it. Screaming as they're shooting shit. They're like, fuck you, bitch. Um, yeah, uh, you do that and you hear um, <laughs> cackling from the. Uh, the seer is he's like oh well i guess i do need some practice killing i mean i am going to uh be doing that to the rest of the city above come on let's do this <laughs> oh my god um okay. and uh Artie, uh you hear this from outside the commotion of or outside the confines of your statue and you hear over your earpiece uh bones say uh uh well guys i uh I think it's time to uh, bust out a little bit. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's 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 bust out. Oh, and, I've been uh, waiting for those words. I, I have I have so more do you stuff. Need, uh, Sorry, I just realized I have to do one more roll for a thing. Oh shit! I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Your thing. No, oh. you're fine. I just fine. forgot I have Colossus Slayer and because he's under his hip max. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's only one. It's okay. <laughs> Take one extra damage off of the, the Seer? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. A little okay. extra fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, and then when I can't... Ca- yes, yeah, so I'm going to cast Hunter's Mark. 
Okay. Which, if I can remember how to do that, that'd be great. <laughs> With Hunter's Mark, you just do it. There's oh, no I can just do save. it. Okay. Um, and then next time you attack, you get to apply the extra damage. Oh, sweet. Okay, I forgot. I thought I had a roll. Um, yeah, then I'll cast Hunter's Mark, and that's the end of my turn. Okay, uh, you're putting it on the Seer again? Mm-hmm. Okay, sounds good. Um, so yeah, so Artie, you hear, uh, you hear your, your squad leader basically say, get ready to bust out. Um, so, uh, when your turn comes up, it'll be your turn to figure out how you're going to bust out of a statue. Okay. Um, next in the order is, uh, oh, actually, Eberus and Chester, you both rolled, um, 19, so go ahead and roll you again You want us real to quick. roll again, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Typical DM making the players do all the work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I got an eight on the table. Get my callus rolling hand. There we go. Thirteen. Okay, so yeah, we'll go Eberus first and then Chester. So you're up, Eberus. Alrighty. Uh, and no, no one's moved yet. Not yet. And the Hulk's still up there. Alrighty. I'm going to cast um, my spiritual weapon. I'm assuming I can't hit with that on the same turn I cast it, or can I? You can. You can. Um, it, yeah, quick. it's part of casting it. So I'm going to conjure a spiritual weapon. It's going to be a uh, ghostly looking, yet venerable warhammer. Come out of nowhere, and it's going to pop this uh, seer guy right in the mouth. Right in the mouth? Right in the mouth. Right in the kisser. And then it's going to do seven damage. <clears throat> okay, seven damage. Okay, that was your bonus action, I believe. Yep. Uh, are we... And we're all, like, cuddled near the door. Yeah, you're all still near near the door. So I'm going to, like, step out so my homies have mo- room to move move like more towards the center of the room sure and i'm gonna use my action to summon another lightning bolt and hit that mofo on the top of its head okay another dexterity saving throw or just uh dex yes um it's a five foot or it's a point and then everyone within five foot hits so i'd like to hit the the hulk if i can as well uh yeah you can yeah you can easily do that that's fine okay well uh, then he should have also taken 20 as well for my okay. initial. That's fine. I'll I'll take that off then. Roger. Okay, so I got 10 for the Hulk. Nope. And, I, and I've got a 18 for the Seer. That passes. I'm going to channel Divinity. Oh, no. <laughs> and Blast. So that's uh, 41, or, yeah, 41 damage to the Hulk. And... 20 damage to the seer. Damn, Daniel. He keeps dodging too, though. Ugh. Yeah. He's passed he's, both those dex checks. He, he's dexterous. Quicker than lightning. <clears throat> Okie dokie. Yep, then that's the end of my turn. Cool. Uh, Chester. All right. Um, Chester is going to do a little sneaky sneaking around these benches here. And sure. he's going to sneak up on the uh, the big bad guy. Uh, okay. Uh, so you want to roll to hide? Yeah. And I got a 14. Okay. Which is not good. Not the best, but... No, it's not the best. Oh. <laughs> yeah, especially with that passive perception there. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, you start moving underneath these benches and the Hulk uh, turns to you immediately and... and sees you moving and starts like snarling towards you okay um then for my action here i'm going to cast a phantasmal force on the hulk can i get an intelligence saving throw (laughs) sure (laughs) that's so worrisome uh he rolled a two (laughs) all right well my dc was not hard to beat but you managed to lose. Hulk smart. 
Um, so I'm going to uh, craft the illusion of a swarm of killer bees around the Hulk. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, he's swatting at them then. Yep. And Not I'm just, just killer the... bees, but murder hornets. <laughs> murder hobo hornets. They have mm. no home. They have nothing to lose. All they know is to kill. <laughs> uh, so uh, he may use his action each turn to uh, investigate the horde of like the, the, the illusion. Um, if you pass my DC on any of those checks, uh, the spell ends. Um, I'm concentrating on this spell. Each round on my turn, the uh, fan phantasm can deal 1d6 psychic damage to the target. So do I get that this turn, or do I get that next turn? You technically get it this... I, I, I would think you would get it this like, turn. Yeah, probably okay. same as the spiritual weapon. Yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, the Hulk's gonna take two damage from imaginary bee stings. Yeah, you actually see um, as, as he's as this magic as this uh, psychic energy uh, hits the Hulk, you actually see it reflect off of him and hit the uh, seer, but the seer sort of just brushes it off. What like the no fuck? Deal. What the fuck? Okay, that's nice, I guess. Mm-hmm. So, well, uh, that is that's Chester's turn. Okay, next is the uh, the seer, and you actually watch him um, start to move. And the way he moves is very different from how he moved in... Actually, it's not that different, because he teleported after you stabbed him. Um, you see him sort of start to, like, phase in and out as he moves uh, through this room. Um, and he actually... Uh, Eberus, you moved towards the center of the room, correct? Yes. Yeah. So he's going to move closer to you. Um, and yeah, uh, he's going to move closer to you, hold out his staff, and he needs you to make a wisdom saving throw. Come at me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Making the cleric make a wisdom save throw. Oh, shit. That is a unnatural 20. Oh, man. That's so lucky. Um, <laughs> it was just like barely beat it. Yeah, the first roll, I, it fell off the table. So Okay, no worries. It was lucky. So on a successful save, you just take 3d12 psychic damage. Damn. Wow. That's a success? Wow. Yep. Um, so, well, because normally it would be 6d12. Uh, um, but in this case, you only take 18 psychic damage. And he's about 10 feet from you. Uh, looks like next up is the Hulk, and he has to use his action to investigate this uh, swarm. Uh, so he may choose to use his action to investigate the swarm. The only stipulation is, well, under the effect, he must act in an appropriate way to w with whatever the illusion dictates. Basically, it's very open ended here. Okay, uh, so he's going to actually try and run away from this swarm then, um, and he's just going to run in a straight line. Uh, towards these benches. Oh, oh boy. Okay. Um, and he's gonna start breaking them up. Um, how far did you crawl? Uh, well, how, I was how? moving. Or yeah, I uh, moved twenty-five feet or less towards the uh, big bad evil guy here. Okay. Um, yeah, so he probably doesn't have enough movement to completely reach you, but he does okay. start kind of like wail wailing his arms uh, to try and get these imaginary uh, bees. Okay, okay. Off of him. In the process, he picks up one of these benches and just throws it uh, into one of the statues. And as it does, uh, <laughs> as it hits the statue, um, three of those little Gru creatures uh, come spilling out of it. Oh, oh, wonderful. I was like, yeah, David makes their entry. No, 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 no. Uh, no but it is, it is uh, David's <laughs> turn, though. What's it going to take to break out of one of these? Uh, I mean, you could use your movement to try and, uh, like, you know, heave ho, heave ho, knock it over. Because uh, you're feeling this statue, and it's, it's fragile. It's a fragile piece of stonework. Perfect, yeah. Let's, uh, I'm literally just going to start teetering it. Um, 
trying to get it to not fall over or to fall over yeah okay yeah um you hear the uh statue off to your left uh shatter and uh that's kind of a a good sign for you that it's go time uh you uh you teeter totter it back uh a little bit and um the statue uh just falls over shatters on the ground and you come spilling out uh you are prone but um okay yeah the scene around you is kind of chaotic at this moment perfect um how much of my movement would have been taken up getting out of that uh, i'd say probably like 10 feet cool so that means i still have half to get up from being prone mm-hmm. perfect i'm going to leap to my feet i'm going to look around and i'm just going to shout all righty then which one of you are the bad guys thank you for listening to our show for more content including world maps cast info or additional podcasts check out our website oneuppodcasts.com be sure to follow us on twitter at are we dead yet pod and on facebook at facebook.com slash are we dead yet podcast intro and outro music composed by salty dog company find them on soundcloud by searching for salty dog co spell dog d-a-w-g background music and ambience provided by tabletopaudio.com under an attribution non-commercial no derivatives 4.0 international license from creative commons tabletopaudio.com really brings your games to life and is perfect for both adding in that background music to a podcast or for live sounds during gameplay to increase immersion check them out at tabletopaudio.com cover art by ashley steinke We'll be back in two weeks with another episode of the show. Bye.